cwestiynau nawr i'r prif weinidog, a'r cwestiwn cynta Paul Davis. Uh, Diolch ywydd. Beth mae Llywodraeth Cymru yn neud i wella gwasanaethau iechyd yn Sir Benro dros y deuddeg mis nesaf? Well, I'm going to new Roy Gwasanaethau Iechyd i bobl Sir Benro sy'n darparu i'r caniadau gore posibl i Gleibion. Prif weinidog mae'n bwysig ein bod ni yn gwella gwasanaethau iechyd yn Sir Benro yn y deuddeg mis nesaf, er mwyn dechrau mynd i'r Afel a Gordewdra, oherwydd yn anffodus, mae cyfraddau Gordewdra yn ardal bwrdd iechyd prifysgol hywel ddaw wedi cynyddu i gymar i a byrddiau iechyd eraill. Nawr, dwi'n derbyn fod y cynulliad wedi pasio byl iechyd cyhoeddus Cymru yn ddiweddar sy'n mynd i helpu i fynd i'r afel a phroblemau Gordewdra. Ond gallwch chi ddweud wrthon ni pa fesur penodol mae'r llywodraeth yn golygu cyflwyno yn y flwyddyn nesaf er mwyn dechrau mynd i'r afel a phroblemau Gordewdra. Well, of course, uh, Newydi uh, stryd hwn o'r blaen. I mean, we're the way bod na fwy i wneud. Uh, Byddai'n adeiladu ar y ddeddu hunan er mwyn sicrhau bod na strategaethau'n cael ei ddod i mynd i le er mwyn delio gyda'r problem hyn. Mwyn o'n problem sydd dim ond yng Nghymru ond ym mhob gwlad uh, cyfoethog uh, yn, yng Ngorllewyn Ewrop. Yn rhywbeth sy'n codi nawr mewn rhai gleidydd eraill lle, lle dwi ddim ni cael ei weld o'r blaen. Simon Thomas. Diolch llywydd. Pwy ni dod byddwch chi'n gwybod bod pobl Sir Benfo yn awyddus iawn i ddychwelyd at sefyllfa lle mae'n y gwasanaethau pediatric yn ysbyty llwyn helyg dros nos, dwi dydd a nos, a bod yna daiseb yn cael ei cyflwyno yn fuan iawn i'r cynulliad hyd y pewyl yna. Ydych chi, jyst i fod yn glir, ydych chi'n cytuno mae dyna i'w ddelfyd y dylid anelu ato fe, ac oes gyda chi fel llywodraeth am selen tuag at cyfaith y pwynt hwnnw? Mae sy'n bwysig eich gwrs i'w bod unrhyw gwasanaethau'n gwasanaethau saff, lle mae gwasanaethau wedi newid, a, a lle mae'r colega brenhinol wedi gweud bod hwnna yn rhywbeth e, e, deleg ar ei wneud, felly hwnna yw beth yn ni'n cefnogi fel llywodraeth, ond wrth gweud hynny, wrth ni'n mwyn sicrhau e, bod pob si, pob gwasanaeth sy'n gallu cael i ddarparu yn ysbyty llwyn helig yna yn yr ysbyty, ond dwi'n ddim yn meddwl wrth gwrs bod popeth felly fydd y bôl eisiau gweld yn yr ysbyty, mae'n ni'n sicrhau bod gwasanaethau'n saff i drigolion Sir Benfro a Trigolion uh, Ardal Bwrdd Hywel Dda. Cwestiwn dau, Mark Isherwood. Uh, what support is the Welsh Government giving to the North Wales economy? We continue to support economic development across the whole of Wales by helping businesses to grow, investing in high quality infrastructure and improving economic development conditions. Thank you. Uh, at the CBI North Wales dinner um, a week ago last Thursday, um, which of course your uh, colleague Ken Skates also uh, attended alongside some other members, we heard that the North Wales growth deal bid was nearing uh, completion and then ready to go to UK government and obviously uh, Welsh government. When that, the UK government first made the growth bid offer, it said it would be looking to work with the Welsh government to devolve powers down. And in his um, stakeholders update in April, the Chief Executive of Flincher Council, who is leading the team putting together the bid for the six North Wales councils, said ambitions for devolved powers to be granted to the region include transport functions, strategic land use planning, business innovation, advisory functions, careers advice and taxation, by which means devolved taxation uh, powers, all powers which are within the, um, the gift or otherwise of Welsh Government. How will your government be responding to to this call? Uh, well, carefully, I think, is the, is the word that I'd use. First, if we look at business rates, if they were to be devolved to local authorities, then 17 of the 22 local authorities would lose out. Uh, so we must be careful that we, uh, we don't see that situation arise. We will look to devolve powers to uh, appropriate bodies where we can. It's fair to say that not all local authorities are able to exercise those powers effectively. We want local authorities to work in regional bodies, but we are fully committed to the growth uh, bid. Uh, and, of course, we will work with the uh, UK government in order to take that bid forward. Hannah Blythe. Yeah. Um, since being elected a year ago, I've not only wanted to serve my own constituency, but also to be a strong voice for the whole of North East Wales. And I'm pleased that in the past 12 months, we've witnessed much Welsh government investment in my own constituency alone, from Flint Castle to Theatre Clwyd, to support for local businesses, but alongside major proposals to improve our infrastructure across the whole of North Wales. Um, does the First Minister agree with me that what the people and communities of North Wales need is action, not just words, and that we will further reassure us in North Wales that the Welsh Government remains committed to investing and supporting our region? Very much so. Uh, I mean, work is already underway, of course, to help to deliver the Wilva Newydd project. We announced a £20 million fund to establish an advanced manufacturing and research institute supporting key employers like uh, Airbus. Uh, we've announced plans, of course, to invest more than £200 million in the A55-A494 uh, corridor. 
Uh, we've committed £50 million to take forward the first phase of the North East Wales uh, Metro and, of course, backing uh, a little further west for the uh, third crossing over the, uh, the Menai. That's in addition to a million pounds of the funding to develop a new business hub in Wrexham, supporting 100 new businesses. Um, First Minister, people across Wales are grieving for those in Manchester and further afield following the horrific events last night. I'd like to pass on my condolences and solidarity with everyone affected. The senseless violence and the fact that there are children and young people among the victims has left the whole of the UK devastated. I know you made a statement earlier on. But can you place on record all of our appreciation for the men and the women of the emergency services and all of those people who have worked overnight and today to treat the wounded and to help those get to safety? It's worth reiterating, in my view, how much our public service workers are valued at a difficult time like this. Very much so. Uh, I, I'm sure that the, that the entire chamber uh, was supportive of what I said earlier on, and, and indeed what the leader of Ply Cymru has, has said. Uh, there are always exercises to deal uh, with, to, to look at, at how uh, attacks like this can be dealt with, but when it actually happens, uh, then of course the system is, is tested uh, very rigorously. Uh, and certainly what we have seen from the emergency services, what we've seen from the hospitals, what we've seen from the community uh, shows the, the, the level of resilience even in the face of tragedy. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. And while the facts as to who is responsible are still being established, we know that attacks like this can put enormous strain upon community relations in Welsh cities as well as in other parts of the UK. One of the objectives of extremists, aside from harming innocent people, is to divide communities. They want to make people fearful and suspicious of each other so that they can profit from alienation and division. The real story is of people of all backgrounds and faiths, emergency workers, taxi drivers, coming together to face down those extremists. Will you reiterate today, First Minister, that none of us here will let terrorists divide our communities? Uh, absolutely not. Extremists only represent themselves, a very small number of people with a worldview that is intolerant and is driven to violence. Uh, they are happy to murder people of all religions or none. They are happy to murder young people who are doing nothing more than going out for a night out. It's too early to say, of course, the extent uh, of uh, what surrounded the events last night. The police are still investigating, and it is important that um, there's no speculation in order for those investigations to be, uh, to be carried uh, forward. Uh, but make no mistake, whoever carried out the attacks of last night represented only themselves and a very small group of people around them. They can never represent an entire community. Diolch Fawr, First Minister, and I'm sure that message would be appreciated by many communities throughout Wales and beyond. It's important, First Minister, that everyone remains calm and that we don't change our, the, way of our, the way we live our lives in the face of this senseless and tragic violence. People are planning to visit our capital city in the coming weeks, need further reassurance. Can you update the Assembly on the security preparations for major events, such as the Champions League final in Cardiff on June the 3rd? Yes, I touched on this in the conversation I had with the Deputy National Security Advisor. Um, the security arrangements for the Champions League final are, are robust. Uh, I met with uh, a number of the organisations involved uh, last week for the final time, including Gold Command. Uh, all the preparations are in place in terms of communications, in terms of security. Members and indeed members of the public will see over the course of the next few days uh, the arrangements being put in place in order that people can come to our capital city to enjoy themselves and be left with a favourable impression. We know there are some people who would not wish that to be uh, so. Uh, and anything that can be learned from the events uh, of the last 24 hours will be factored in to the, uh, the security arrangements for the Champions League final. But we're, you know, th this is the world we live in. We are aware of what needs to be done in order to provide for the security of the public when they come to our capital city. Uh, and working with the police and other authorities, that's exactly what we intend to do. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, if I may, Presiding Officer, I will not take my three questions today, um, given I think we need to stand shoulder to shoulder uh, and face down this act of evil, this atrocity that happened in Manchester uh, last night. Uh, as a father, I cannot think of anything more horrific than being separated from your children, separated from your loved ones, uh, in the uncertain knowledge of what might have happened to them. Um, I, like many parents, would have dropped uh, my children off at events uh, to meet at a designated spot, uh, and they come back safely. And I can only offer my love, my support, my condolence uh, to each and every member who's gone through a bereavement, the injured in hospital, and tribute to the dedication of the public services who responded so quickly and so professionally uh, to that atrocity, that act of evil that visited Manchester uh, last night. But I would like to put three points to you, if I may, First Minister. The first is what came evident today was the amount of people that did go from North Wales to Manchester, as on an everyday basis attend events in Manchester. Uh, on the radio this morning, many parents, many youngsters who attended that event. There will be a requirement for help and support. I don't know the destination um, of some of the bereaved or obviously the injured parties in the hospitals where, they, where they've come from, but I'm sure some of those individuals will have come from North Wales. Uh, and I know it's early hours and early uh, days yet, but what calibration, what work is the Welsh Government doing with uh, the public services in North Wales to make sure that help and support is there for the families um, in the education field, but also uh, in the health field as well, to make sure that no stone is left unturned when families look for that support and look for that help uh, from those services in North Wales. And if extra resources are required, I'm sure you will confirm this, those extra resources will be made available to local authorities and also to the health boards. Secondly, uh, as the leader of Plaid Cymru quite clearly identified, uh, we do have a major sporting event in the Champions League uh, happening here, the final, um, in a little over 10 days' time. But there are events across the whole of Wales that happen uh, on a day-to-day, week-by-week basis. Uh, and it falls to all of us to play our part to work with the, with security uh, services, whether it be police or MI5 or any of the security services, to make sure we can be the eyes and ears of, on the streets and reporting what we see. Uh, but how can the Welsh Government distill down any information it has so that the public can have confidence that they can attend these events in, in the full knowledge that every measure possible has been put in place to protect the public uh, and to allow democracy and our free society to continue to function? Because we must not be cowered by these acts of violence. That is one thing that is quite critical. And thirdly, what I'd like to just seek off the uh, First Minister as we do go forward is that any information that is available, uh, and the First Minister has indicated that he has received a security <coughs> briefing this morning, and I presume some of that information, if not all that information, might be confidential. But where information can be made available, it is made available in a timely manner uh, to the public in Wales, to organisers of events, uh, so that, again, people can go about their everyday lives and play the important role that we all have to play in our great democracy of standing up against these acts of evil that visited Manchester last night. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of Manchester and whatever happens, we will not be beaten by such atrocities. I thank the Leader of the Welsh Conservatives for his comments. It is difficult for us in this chamber and the vast majority of people across the world to conceive of a philosophy that holds that murdering young people advances the cause of humanity. How can we understand those thought processes? But we know there are some, unfortunately, who hold those views. And there is, of course, a duty on all authorities to provide as much protection as possible to the public against these people. After the events in Tunisia, we did set up uh, a helpline uh, that uh, looked to provide uh, signposting to counselling for people. We will look to do the same thing again in the aftermath of this event. We are not aware of anybody who has been injured or killed who comes from Wales uh, as yet. Uh, nothing to indicate that, uh, but of course we will uh, monitor the situation very, very closely. Uh, one thing I think we do need to be careful of is not to put people off coming to events. He is right when he says that the last thing we should do is to modify our behaviour 
and our beliefs for that matter, in the face of terrorism. That's exactly what they want. They want us to become more intolerant so that we share some kind of their intolerance. They want us to alter the way in which we, we exercise our freedom and go to events. They see that as a victory. What I can say to people is that, of course, uh, we will be taking further advice with regard to the Champions League, but a lot of work's already been done uh, regarding security around the, uh, the Champions uh, League, and that work has been in train for, for many, many months, as members would expect, given the fact that it is an event of significant uh, size. In terms of information, he has identified the, the, um, the issues. Firstly, some information is shared on what is effectively Privy Council basis. It's confidential. Uh, members will understand that, that there is information that needs to be kept confidential so as not to interfere with any police investigation. But of course, uh, where information is no longer sensitive and where that information is, uh, needs to be shared with the public, then it, that will, will happen at the appropriate time. Arweinydd Group UKIP, Neil Hamilton. John Clareth. Can I congratulate the uh, First Minister on speaking so finely for us all in this Assembly in his statement at the start of today's proceedings and to add my condolences and the condolences of my party or my members here and uh, members of the party in the country to those who have lost their lives and uh, uh, been maimed in the horrible outrage in Manchester. Uh, I agree with the First Minister that it is impossible for us to understand the mindset of those who are prepared indiscriminately to slaughter children in the way that happened last night. Uh, not the first time in the Arndale Centre, of course, in Manchester where an event of this kind has occurred. When I was a Member of Parliament, just a few miles away from the centre of Manchester back in the 1990s, we had a similar kind of outrage from, in those days, the IRA. But uh, I'm sure the First Minister will agree with me that the best way that a democratic society can fight against such uh, tendencies is to carry on as normal so far as we can. And for a democratic assembly uh, like the National Assembly for Wales, whilst it is right that we should suspend the party political dogfight uh, for today, we're in the middle of an election campaign nationally as well. And the best act of defiance for us is to continue to do what democratic societies do and which totalitarian societies do not, that is to solve our differences by means of debate rather than by the bomb and the bullet. And uh, so I have no further questions uh, for the First Minister today, but I'd like to express my solidarity with everyone else who has spoken on what was going to be a somber day for us in any event because of tributes to Rodri, but which has been made immeasurably worse by the events of last night. Can I thank the leader of UK for, for his comments? One of the main purposes of acts such as this is to make us more angry and more intolerant in order to provoke an even greater reaction. We do not need to do that. We are bigger than they are. Today, the mood of the chamber is, is sombre. That's, that's true, and with good reason. In the next few days, we'll get back to debate. We'll get back to robust electioneering. That's the nature of what we do. But that is the essence of our democracy. Uh, robust debate and exchange of ideas is what gives us the ability to see ourselves as a free society. And the actions of last night were designed to close down that which makes us a free society. It is absolutely right to say that we, we should carry on. Of course, uh, we have to be cautious when it comes to security. And uh, for people who visit, not just Wales, but any other country, they need to be assured that their security is paramount to us. And I, and I can <coughs> say that is absolutely true as far as the Welsh Government and indeed the UK Government is uh, concerned. But I have children in the age range of the majority of those who have been at that concert last night. What exactly did they do to deserve to be injured or killed? We can't answer that question. Uh, that, the answer to that question lies in a tormented, intolerant and dangerous mind. Uh, and that was the mind, I believe, the, of uh, the perpetrator who carried out the, uh, the attack uh, last night. But as I said, we can get above that. 
the strongest message that we can send who those, to those who wish to terrorise our society is that they cannot win. And they cannot win because we will carry on enjoying our freedoms. We will carry on enjoying what we have built over many decades and centuries. And we will never give way to their intolerance and their violence. Question three, Stefan Lewis. rail network in the last financial year. The Welsh Government provides £180 million in franchise subsidy payments and funding for additional services and rolling stock. Uh, I thank the First Minister for the answer. I declare an interest that my sister is an employee of Network Rail. Um, I wonder if the First Minister can provide updated figures on the amount of profit made by the current operator of that franchise. I have figures for 2012 that uh, show that that company made a profit of £13.6 million. And of course, as a company that is entirely owned by the German government, and bidding is underway for the next franchise. I wonder if the First Minister can tell us whether he remains committed to uh, returning the rail network to public ownership, and if so, does he believe that uh, an opportunity has been missed in not using the operator of last resort provision in order to bring it back into Welsh public ownership as quickly as possible? Uh, I am committed to that. Uh, unfortunately, of course, due to the uh, provision in the Wales Act, it is not an option open to us. Uh, we have not been uh, permitted to look at an arm's length public body being used to run the, the, the franchise. Unlike in Scotland, you will know that this is an issue where we share the same view uh, and something where we, we are in dispute with the UK Government uh, over. Uh, as part of the franchising process next year, we expect to see the best value for money delivered for Welsh uh, customers uh, and, of course, significant investment in, uh, in rolling stock. There are many people who use the Valleys lines who are on rolling stock that, that are many, many, many decades old. They deserve better than that, and we want to see that delivered over the course of the next franchise period. Jenny Rathbone. Uh, um, um, it is a strange irony, is it not, that irony, uh, uh, Riva Trains receives one of the highest subsidies of any um, public uh, train provider and yet has just declared record profits. I'm sure you, like me, uh, would like to see a government that, with a more rational approach to the way we run our railways after June the 8th. But for now, we have a UK government that is unfortunately committed to insisting that the 125 million that have, has been set aside to improve our rail services must be spent on electrifying the valleys lines when all the experts are clear that light rail is both more cost effective and will improve the journey times in a way that electrification will not. What do you think your government can do to ensure that there is a much more rational approach to the way we invest public money to ensure that we get the gains that are needed in the metro system that we hope to deliver across uh, South East Wales? Well, we have a curious uh, system uh, where a public subsidy of £180 million is provided to a private company who then make a profit of £40 million on top. I mean, it's very difficult to justify uh, that sort of uh, level. I mean, we weren't in charge of the franchise when it was, when it was uh, awarded last time around, but it's very difficult to justify that to the, to the public. Of course, it, light rail is electrified. Uh, there are way different ways of doing it. You don't have to have overhead uh, cabling. There are other means of doing that. But for me, the, the core principle of the Metro is that, that it should be extendable. Uh, yes, of course, we have the core network in place at the moment, but in time, uh, the plan is to look at new routes that are not currently served by heavy rail. Uh, if we are serious about developing uh, the, the region around Cardiff and beyond, then we have to make sure that people can travel without having to get into their cars, thus causing greater uh, congestion. And so that extendability and, and also the, the mix of provision uh, that will be part no doubt of the, uh, of the metro uh, will provide that flexibility for the future as well. Dick Ramsey. First Minister, 60 years ago, 70s, I would have been able to travel from my village of Raglan uh, in Monmouthshire by rail to Cardiff. Uh, that can't be done now because obviously we lost a lot of the branch line rail network back in the 50s and 60s. Um, you've mentioned the need to make sure that the metro is expandable and that it reaches areas of South Wales and the South East Wales city region that it hasn't um, to date or hasn't, it wouldn't be able to at the moment. Um, have you looked any more at the issue of a potential metro hub 
at the Celtic Manor or within the area of the Celtic Manor. I have raised this in the past with the Cabinet Secretary for Infrastructure. I think that if you looked at developing a hub at that point, you could then have a very good core uh, to build out from into the rural areas around Newport and up in my neck of the woods to make sure that everyone can benefit from the metro. Yes, I'm tempted to pull his leg and say, well, Tory government closed down the railway line, but I'm not quite sure whether it was or not. Uh, but it was a long time ago. Not we know that. that. <laughs> uh, what we do know is I that, that in the early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, many lines were, were closed uh, by governments of either uh, persuasion. Uh, we also saw, of course, the closure of the Kamala and Aberystwyth line to passengers in 64 and to, to milk in 1973, uh, with the track being taken up very soon after. A great tragedy and something we could have uh, <laughs> certainly profited from in terms of being able to, to, to run a service on that line, uh, at least as far as uh, Strata Florida um, uh, now. But yes, I take his point. It is hugely important that areas of Wales that have not been served by any form of, um, of railway uh, should be served by uh, in, in the future by a form of transport that may include uh, probably light rail rather than heavy rail. Uh, we know, of course, in his constituency that uh, much of the former rail track going up to Monmouth has been built over by, by the dual carriageway. Uh, and the Celtic Manor is an important um, part of our plans for developing the, the metro. As, as I said, at the core of, the metro, of, th of thinking for the metro is that the system should be flexible and extendable, and that means looking at parts of Wales that have not had a rail service for many, many years as much of his constituency has not had. Question Pedwar John Griffiths. Uh, excuse me, Claude, I'm temporarily embarrassed, I'm afraid. I'll have to get that question up. Yes, um, will the First Minister provide an update on progress with integrated transport in South East Wales, Diochenbal? Yes, I the National you, Transport. I think you should thank you, we're on to do this. <laughs> <laughs> The National Transport Finance Plan is a live document and contains uh, an ambitious programme of interventions that are in varying stages of development. And we will update the plan periodically to reflect developments over time and, of course, the changing profile of need across Wales. Would you agree with me, First Minister, that active travel must be an important part of integrated transport in South East Wales? I know that local authorities are working up their integrated plans for the future. Welsh Government must continue to take a keen interest in those plans and make sure that they fit with that wider integrated transport agenda. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the change that is happening, it's not yet happened across every local authority, the change that is happening at the moment is that uh, cycling and walking are seen as modes of transport uh, rather than uh, means of recreation uh, alone. Uh, and we know that many of our cities are well placed to deliver um, cycle paths and cycle routes. We know but the issue for many people who might cycle is they don't want to be on the road with cars. For, for, the, for, the, uh, for the brave, yes, they do. I know that, and, and, and quite rightly so, uh, because they have every right to be on the road. Uh, but the more we can develop um, cycle routes that are physically separated from cars, the more people we will attract, I believe, onto those routes, because they don't feel they have to compete with, with cars and lorries on, on the road. And that's very much part, of course, as he will know, of the Active Travel Act. Mark Reckless. Following the very welcome uh, abolition of the seven tolls, and we hope the construction of an M4 uh, relief road, does the First Minister uh, agree with me that the uh, importance of rail as an alternative to integrate with the road system only increases? And does he welcome the decision of his uh, Cabinet Secretary that the uh, mega undy proposal for a new train station should be taken forward as well as Llanwern and St Melons that were identified within the first 12? as putting three new rail stations on that route between Cardiff and the Severn would transform the nature of the service. Yeah, I'm not sure the tolls have actually been abolished yet, but uh, certainly that's something that we, we would welcome. Uh, I always welcome statements made by, uh, by my uh, Cabinet Ministers, uh, and it's right to say that um, uh, in different stages we are looking at uh, reopening lines to the, to the east of Cardiff and Newport, an area that's not been well served by by the rail network. We know, for example, that the eastern part of the city of Cardiff is, 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 has been historically very poorly served. There is a need to improve uh, public transport links to the eastern part of the, of the city. And the same applies, of course, to, uh, to settlements between, uh, uh, between Newport and the, uh, the Severn Bridge. Uh, we can't simply uh, build roads. We must make sure that uh, as roads are improved and built, uh, that we also provide uh, better public transport connections as well. 
Gareth Bennett. Dear Arch Lewis, um, one of the harder things to achieve with public transport is the travel card that enables passengers to travel on different types of transport. Now, I know that um, your government is going to be involved with negotiating the new uh, rail franchises. How much of a priority will providing that kind of um, travel card form in your talks with the rail companies? Well, there are two issues. Firstly, it's, it's trickier uh, dealing with travel card negotiations at railway stations because there, there's more than one operator. In terms of the metro, it's essential that there is an integrated Oyster-style travel card available, although even in London now, of course, uh, it's possible to travel simply by using a contactless debit card. Uh, so actually, the Oyster cards are now even less uh, essential than once they were. For some people, of course, they're important for, the, for those who don't have access to contactless cards. But yes, they, they need them to, uh, uh, to travel. But it is absolutely crucial that the, the network of the South East Wales Metro has a, a, a one card that covers all journeys uh, within the metro area. Otherwise, of course, it's not an integrated system. Nidu Michelle Brown and my Holly question Pim question where Hannah Blythin will the First Minister provide an update on how the Year of Legends will benefit North East Wales? Yes, our tourism strategy sets out our priorities in supporting the uh, tourism industry, including capital and development funding, along with marketing and promotional opportunities. We know that um, the Year of Legends uh, provides an opportunity for us to uh, build on that foundation. Thank you, First Minister. As part of the Year of Legends, we are awaiting with great anticipation the winning design for a new Welsh Government support installation at Flint Castle. I'm sure everybody in the community is looking forward to this leg latest legend descending on the shores of the castle. But there is another local legend of old that the constituency, and particularly the community of Mould, are rightly proud of. The Mould Gold Cape was found in 1833 by workmen quarrying for stone in a burial mound and is currently part of the British Museum collection in London. It has previously left the British Museum to be temporarily exhibited in, in Wrexham, but it has never actually made it back to Mould to be temporarily exhibited in the town where it was found. First of all, as we commemorate and celebrate the Year of Legends, do you share with many of my constituents that it would be great to see the gold cape return to be exhibited in the town where it was discovered? Yes, I mean, the gold cape is, is famous. Of course, I'm sure the people of Mould would, would like to see the actual gold cape there rather than it being commemorated in the name of a pub. Uh, it was in Wrexham. The difficulty at the moment, of course, is that there's nowhere in mould for the Cape to be exhibited, uh, and that is what needs to be resolved first. Uh, in order for that to happen, um, what, what the local authority of Fincher could uh, look at taking the lead, talking with us as Welsh Government, to see what could be done in order to provide the facility with the right atmosphere, in terms of the atmospherics, and in terms of the right security in order to provide a, a home for the, uh, the Gold Cape, even if temporary, in, in the years to, uh, to come. We're more than happy, of course, to work with the local authority and with the local people to see how we can move this forward to, um, to bring the Cape home and for the people of Moor to be able to see the Cape uh, in, in its hometown. Janet Finch Saunders. And a good question from the member there for us in North Wales. Visit, uh, First Minister, Visit Britain has launched Where Stories Become Legends, an international film tourism campaign with Warner Brothers to coincide with the release of the King Arthur film, parts of which were filmed in Snowdonia. How is Visit Wales using the Year of Legends campaign to collaborate on this? And what future plans do you have to promote the region of North Wales, home to some of the most dramatic and beautiful landscapes in the world that are available to the film industry and its fans? Well, King Arthur was a film, if I remember rightly, we, we, we supported as a government. Uh, it, a film that uh, we uh, took a stake in. Uh, it, it's a film that, yes, has been uh, located in, uh, in Wales and also a film, of course, that has benefited from, um, I believe, post-production in Wales as well. The member asked what we have done particularly for the north of Wales. Well, I can say uh, that so half a million pounds has been made available in this financial year for projects in the north. So five projects via the Regional Tourism Engagement Fund, totalling a quarter of a million pounds, and a further £265,000 via the Tourism Product Innovation Fund to support six projects across the north as well. I can say since April 2013, the Tourism Investment Support Scheme has made offers of funding uh, to, businesses in the, to 48 businesses in the north, totalling nearly £8 million. That's brought in additional investment of £12.5 million and uh, assisted uh, 551 jobs in terms of them being secured, with another 433 jobs being created. Sir Griffith. Uh, the is, um, 
tra bod ni'n berffaith iawn, wrth gwrs, i ni ddenni bobl i ddod i, I ddathlu a, a uh, dod yn fwy yn wybodol o'r uh, chwedloniaeth a stori sydd ganddo ni ddweud yng Ngogledd Ddwyrain Cymru i gyfeirio nôl at y cwestiwn uh, gwreiddiol. Uh, Mân a farchnad sylweddol hefyd, wrth gwrs, yng Ngogledd Ddwyrain Cymru uh, ac yn aml iawn, dyw pobl leol ddim yn wastad yn gwerthorogi uh, yr hanes ar asedau um, uh, sydd ganddo ni yn y gogledd ddwyrain. Felly, gai ofyn tra bod yr ymgyrch yma'r gwrs yn hyrwyddo Cymru neu hangach, uh, ond i ddylech llywodraeth hefyd yr un prif yn gwneud llawer mwy i hyrwyddo uh, yn hanes am trefladaeth ni ar lefel leol hefyd. Fe ddigwyddodd hynny'n yn y ddiau gyda'r ymfuriadoleth genedlaethol, mi gynyddodd nifer yn welwyr yn sylweddol, ac wrth gwrs mi gynyddodd y nifer o bobl oedd yn gwirfoddoli ac yn teimlo perchnogaeth o'r asedau hynny, oedd yn cryfhau y cynnig e hangach uh, o fewn uh, y gogledd. Well, the run or, or project, I mean, we need to think about this, but I'll step in, Drews, I mean, I'm project that we saw on Danon Barra, but I saw a project that I had in the end, and I saw it in the end, and I saw it Lleol, gan end, and I saw it in the end, and I saw it in the end, and I saw it in the end, and I saw it uh, ond, of course, mae hyn holl bwysig i sicrhau bod bobl yn gwybod beth sy'n yna ac yn fynd ddiddordeb yn beth sy'n yna hanes i hunen. Er mwyn, of course, bod nhw'n gallu uh, actio fel uh, llisgen hadon uh, iddi ardaloedd uh, nhw uh, a sicrhau mwy o bobl uh, yn dod, ymweld, sefyll ag alarian. Cwestiwn saith, Russell George. Will the First Minister make a statement on access to GP medical services in Montgomeryshire? We continue to work with the Health Board and other partners in Wales to take a range of actions to improve access to healthcare services that are safe and sustainable and as close to people's homes as possible. Uh, thank you, First Minister. I've been contacted by a parent who has been trying to arrange for a simple medical examination for her daughter at her local surgery in Newtown. Uh, and this is an, uh, a requirement in advance of her going abroad uh, to study. Now, the surgery has made the decision not to undertake any further uh, medicals of this nature uh, due to the GP shortage. Um, now, uh, no other practices in the area are able to also offer uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, an appointment. Uh, the parent has even offered to pay. Um, my office has been in contact with the local health board, who are also not able to offer uh, any support. So as it stands from my understanding, uh, the only option available now for this young lady to get a medical that she needs to go and study abroad is to pay for it privately, uh, and she would need to go to uh, the nearest uh, area to do this would be uh, somewhere in England. Um, so one, I'd be grateful if you could offer any advice to my constituent, uh, and two, um, if you could offer any update on the uh, shortage of GPs that we see, uh, particularly in mid-Wales, uh, that is becoming, I'm sure you would agree also, more, more of a crisis that we have to deal with. Uh, I, I, I don't understand uh, the, the view taken by the GP practice. I, what I don't know, of course, without, I, mean, I, would, I would invite the right to me as well, of course, uh, with more details, but GPs don't provide every service for free. Uh, some services are, have always been paid for. Uh, GPs are, are paid, sometimes paid through the NHS. If, for example, they carry out blood tests, uh, sometimes, of course, they charge the individual directly, um, signing for things uh, quite often. Uh, so I don't know whether this is a service that would routinely be provided on the NHS or not, but uh, he has raised the issue with me. Uh, if he provides me with details, I will, of course, uh, respond. Question oith, Angela Burns. Yeah, Clara. Good afternoon, <coughs> First Minister. What is the Welsh Government doing to promote staff well-being within the Welsh public sector? Well, we do work closely with public sector employers and trade unions to promote staff well-being as an essential part of the delivery of good Welsh public services. Uh, you will be aware that um, almost 8,000 staff members of the NHS in Wales were affected by anxiety, stress, depression and a number of other psychiatric illnesses in the year 2015-16 and the trend appears to be the same going forward. A Nuremberg Bevan Health Board created and filled the post of Head of Employee Wellbeing, and Adrian Neal and his colleagues are making great strides forward in reducing staff absence and improving employee morale. But First Minister, this wellbeing position is not filled in all the Welsh health boards. Some created the post and then decided to remove it for uh, budgetary reasons. Um, others have got the post, but they are vacant, again, for budgetary reasons. Given the scale of the challenge that we face and how difficult it is to recruit people into the Welsh NHS, I wondered if you might be able to outline what plans you could have to rectify this issue. 
Well, a Health and Wellbeing Programme Board has been established which oversees the programme and the collaborative agenda of NHS Wales in respect of improving staff health and wellbeing and reducing levels of sickness uh, absence. All NHS organisations have achieved or are working towards the corporate health standard, so we would expect all NHS boards to achieve uh, that standard and provide the right level of support uh, for staff, particularly with regards to their own mental health. Question now, Nathan Gill. Thank you, Claire. Um, First Minister, will you make a statement, please, on the North Wales growth deal? Yes, we'll continue to press the case for a North Wales growth bid with the UK Government. Uh, the reference by the Chancellor to the North Wales growth bid in his recent budget, uh, which seems some time ago now, is a positive step forward, and uh, we trust the UK Government will maintain that commitment. Thank you, First Minister. A key part of the North Wales growth deal is Will the Nerith, um, the nuclear power plant which is going to be uh, built on Anglesey, which will create many well-paid jobs highly skilled, not just on Anglesey, but throughout the whole of North Wales. Now, having read through the Labour Party's manifesto, there is clear support for our nuclear energy sector. But just days before the general election was called, Labour's Shadow Chancellor vowed to end nuclear power as part of the Labour government's first 100 days in office. Now, it is well known, of course, about the fact that Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party, has for many years opposed nuclear power. Could you take this opportunity to not only uh, clarify yourself and your government's uh, op opinion and goals for nuclear power, but also the Labour Party's? Uh, aspirations for the nuclear industry? We are 100% committed to uh, Will Van Ewith. Uh, we have already been working with, uh, the, with Will itself and also with uh, skills suppliers in order to make sure that uh, as many local people as possible have the skills that will be required there. Uh, it will provide many uh, temporary construction jobs and importantly around 600 jobs in the, uh, in the community. Uh, there is no wavering in our support for the project. Darren Miller. Um, firstly, can I thank you, First Minister, for the uh, remarks that you've made uh, this afternoon in relation to the attack uh, in uh, Manchester. I'm sure they'll uh, be words of comfort at this very difficult time for many uh, families. As a Mancunian myself, uh, I'm very familiar uh, with uh, that part of the world, and I know that many of my constituents, some of my constituents, were actually present at the event because uh, they have been uh, in touch with me. There's no doubt that events like this uh, have uh, an impact not just on the, uh, on the night for those who have been injured uh, or lost their lives, uh, but indeed for many years to come, uh, including a psychological uh, impact potentially for those uh, who were present. Many of them, uh, as you've already uh, indicated, were, of course, teenagers. Uh, now, as a father, I know uh, of, of, uh, of, of teenagers. I know uh, how important it is that, uh, that young people receive support in a timely manner when they, uh, when they need it. And I was very pleased to hear uh, that uh, you are considering the establishment of a helpline uh, for, uh, for any individuals from Wales who may need access uh, to support in the future. Can I just ask you to confirm uh, that there will be uh, that psychological support also, not just uh, in terms of the physical support which might be uh, available, but the psychological support should it be needed uh, by any of those young people or indeed any of the adults that were intending last night uh, as well? That's the intention. The intention is that the people can be signposted to uh, organisations that can provide that support uh, in the longer term. Uh, it, it tends to be the case with PTSD, for example, that people don't see it at the beginning. It develops over time as people begin to understand the consequences of what might have happened uh, or understand the consequences of what they've seen. So it is hugely important to make sure that that support is available, not just for a week or two, uh, but over the course of time that the individual needs it in order to come to terms with what they've witnessed and what they've experienced. Sir Griffith. Diolch Llywydd. Unig o bod bydd na symud sylweddol yn cael ei buddsoddi nawr yn sgil yr Cais Twf yma yng Ngogledd Cymru. Ma ar awr i dod y lleol, wrth gwrs, wedi dod y tu gilydd i greu cydbwyllgor fydd yn goru chwilio y broses yna. Um, on, on gai ofyn, sut byddwch chi fel llywodraeth yn sicrhau bod y buddsoddiadau yma yn adlewyr chi eich blaen nhw'r eithau strategol chi yng Ngogledd Cymru uh, a, a, a ddim yn cael ei harwen felly i fod yn rhedeg yn paralel, ond bod y cyfan yn gweithio uh, fel un ymdrech i adfywio economaidd uh, yn y gogledd. Oherwydd, uh, dwi ddim yn siŵr iawn lle mae llais y llywodraeth yn cael ei glywed uh, o fewn cydestyn y cydbwyllgor newydd yma. Uh, na chwaith, 
um, sector eraill megis sector fusnes addysg gwch addysg bellach yn y rhanbarth uh, oedd wrth gwrs uh, yn rhan blin llaw o'r bwrdd uchelgais economaidd uh, ond nawr y fydd mae debyg yn cael rhyw rôl heb bleidlais uh, 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 yn y strwythu'r enewydd yma. Oedd gwrs ynglyn â ar bedi hyn yn ynglyn ar sydd i dîl sydd i cymryd lleolau nawr ar ar ddwy'r lleol sydd yn arwain. Uh, a nid llywodraeth Cymru. Ni'n rhan o'r broses, ond mae ein nhw i sicrhau bod y strwythu'r llywodraethu uh, dynnu mewn lle, ac wrth gwrs bod, bod nhw'n ystyru y prosiectau rhan barthol, a nid prosiectau sydd dim ond uh, o les i un siir yn, uh, 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 yn unig. So, felly, I ni, wrth gwrs, ni wyn sicrhau bod strwythu'r dynnu mewn lle, ni'n hyderus bod nhw'n digwydd ni gweld ar y dyrlleol yn gweithio gyda gilydd, ta bwyd sy'n redeg ar awdodau hynny, a ni yn hyderus felly bydd yr arian cael ei ddefnyddio yn y ffordd bydd ni, bydd ni mwyn gweld. Ac wrth gwrs, bydd ni'n gweithio gyda awdodau lleol er mwyn sicrhau bod blaenoriau ni fel llywodraeth, a dwi'n symlod fawr o wahaniaeth rhwng y blaenoriaeth ys ni a'r siroedd yn yn sicrhau bod na ddatblygiad o les i bawb yn y rhanbarth dros y blynyddau. Diolch i'r prif wynidod yr eitemnesau o'r datganiad a chyhoeddiad.